here's just a little magical fairyland of hoodoos and kind of mushroom toadstool uh, rocks just balanced on little perches uh, kind of set into this or near this big amphitheater of uh, of white rock here this is an area just north of highway 89 between canab and page uh, within grand staircase escalante national monument um, these reddish and white striped rocks we see out here uh, this is all this is all part of the jurassic entrada formation a lot of uh, fine-grained sandstones um, a little bit of mud we can come over here to some of the the white cliffs here and, and maybe look at the nature of these a little bit mainly these are a lot of sand dune deposits you can see how soft these are you can kind of rub the grains off with your hand it kind of feels uh again really fine grain kind of powdery uh the wind easily blows some of this white sand around you can see some of the the ripples here in the uh in the wash uh, the other interesting thing is the, the red parts of the Entrada tend to be a little bit more mud and clay rich and they actually form as they dry out these really nice uh, polygon cracks, these mud cracks here. What's cool here is we're seeing something, you know, in the modern environment, but this is also something we tend to see uh, in the ancient environment, in solid rock. So here it is in sort of muds that are in the modern environment. We also see them preserved sometimes in the ancient environment so let's look at these uh kind of toadstool rocks in a little bit of detail uh these have a pretty straightforward explanation but they're they're really just kind of fun to to hang out with and, and look at um so what we have here is a a cap rock a more resistant rock sitting on top this is mostly a coarse grain sandstone a cretaceous sandstone um it probably formed in a fluvial environment but it's much harder and more resistant than the red soft mud stones and, and fine grained sandstones of the Entrada formation. And so we can kind of see the evolution of these things. These big blocks are found just beyond this white bluff here, uh, further back in some cliffs. And so we can imagine um, maybe big flooding events or mass wasting events eventually getting these rocks out into this area where they sit on the ground, kind of like some of these ones here. Uh, in the foreground. So these big blocks of hard sandstone sit on top of these soft muds. Uh, but over time, because the sandstone is so much harder, uh, it actually protects the underlying mudstone. So it forms a, a small pedestal. We can see here there's the cap rock on top and the softer mudstones underneath. There's another one back over here. So, and now if you just allow this process to play out over time, eventually you end up with a little toadstool or mushroom rock that's a little bit taller. This one's a little bit taller than me, maybe seven, eight feet tall. And then eventually uh, even taller, something like this that's maybe uh, 12, 15 feet tall. And you can see a couple other ones out here in the distance. Another little short squatty one as well. Uh, eventually the fate of these um, is probably somewhat uh, what you'd expect as well. Eventually as water coming down from these cliffs washes down the slope here uh, it can undercut the pedestal right so we've got the cap rock on top the harder rock and the pedestal we can even see here uh, some pretty substantial erosion it almost looks like you know it's being it's being cut into by the water maybe the winds helping a little bit and so the clock is ticking on this little pedestal eventually it will collapse the block of sandstone will fall off Assuming it stays more or less intact, it'll really just start the process over again where you get, um, you know, again, the big block of sandstone, the hard rock, um, protecting a, pe a, a developing pedestal of the underlying softer material. A um, little bit bigger one over here with uh, that's sitting on top of some of the white parts of the Entrada sandstone or Entrada formation, but a bigger chunk of cap rock. Little squatty one over here. Uh, and you can kind of just explore these things uh, to your heart's content. It's kind of an easy place to walk around. No vegetation, no cryptobiotic soil to kind of look out for. So we'll kind of head for these two scenic ones out here uh, and wrap it up. So this area drains all into the Perea River, which then joins the Colorado River near Lee's Ferry, uh, just, just over the border in Arizona. Um, 
so yeah colorful banded formation the entrada formation same rocks you see at arches national park for the most part yeah and then we'll just kind of end it here with these these two really nice and quite photogenic little mushroomy rocks sitting on their little pedestals so cool little spot here part of our national park system uh, and just really a delightful place to explore a little bit of geology for you there you go